Welcome back one and all to the RimWorld Eternal Winter Series in our frozen hellscape in our slightly less frozen cabin. Where it is so cold and frozen, in fact, we have these strange looking balls falling from the sky. I wasn't sure what this was at first, but apparently this is hail and it is added by a RimWorld of magic, which is really cool. I tend to appreciate the little things like weather conditions. Our sole protagonist, Rosh here, is starting out his day by having a good sized bite of pemmican to fill up his tummy and then also a smoke from a cigar to feed his nicotine addiction that's slowly growing over time. However, of course, it is one of the very few small comforts he actually gets to enjoy here. It also gives us a 1% boost in consciousness, manipulation, talking, and eating. It also adds 1% to his moving as well, and this 1% boost to these areas is not great. It's barely noticeable, but when he only has one leg, anything is better than nothing. But as Rosh begins his work, for the day, I decided that some of this work could include some nice flooring in his bedroom. This flooring is made out of wood, and though it is scarce, I don't know, we just had such a surplus, I decided to use some. With that being said though, I did also go ahead and start butchering up a bunch of different animals so we can go ahead and get a bunch of bones to construct with. We also ended up having some yak join us, which was perfect timing as we were just looking for animals to kill and butcher, or any that were already dead. Rosh quickly roped up these two yaks and brought them all the way back to the cabin where he would then end up slaughtering them. We would take them inside and butcher them for plenty of meat to add to our pile and plenty of bones. And now with those sweet succulent bones we could build ourselves a dresser as well as an end table for our bedroom we would also end up using some wood for a bookshelf and also some bones for a plant pot and as you'll be able to see this did drastically improve our room it was absolutely terrible before so there wasn't much worse it could get but this is a big step up we would also end up deconstructing more runes nearby and we would use the resources that we got from that to begin work on another section of our cabin and during the time that we were doing this, we actually ended up having a quest called Grace the Sad. Apparently Grace here had been chased out of her home by an ex-lover and wanted to stay here for some time, so we granted this request. In exchange, she would come here and work for us. And I was glad that we accepted this request because she was a pretty good constructor as well as cook. Speaking of which, that is immediately what we began letting her do because Rasha's cooking skill is not exactly up to par. Some time later, we had been granted the opportunity to name our faction and our settlement, so we ended up calling ourselves the Eternal Flame. I thought it fitting, and also we called this place Mount Rosh. Once that was completed, we then would begin working once again on the new room that we were adding onto the cabin. Now you'll notice that this new room also includes the steam geyser in it as well as the cabin overall. I want to thank you guys for reminding me about that. It completely slipped my mind to add that. It's basically free heat for us. It ended up getting a bit too hot in there right away, so we ended up deconstructing one of our doors to ensure that nobody has a heat stroke, especially out here in this frozen wasteland. We had Grace build us a table and chairs so we could eat our meals there, something that had been severely lacking. Interestingly enough though, that night we ended up having a faction assault from the Grey River Pact and the Purple Meyer Pact, so uh, we had a pig man here with a knife and a club, and a Itakin with a massive axe, and the two of them had planned on doing battle in our territory. Which, if I can be completely honest, I really did not care, and I was going to sit on the sidelines and just kind of watch this one. In the end, the Itakin ended up winning, and we hid inside our cabin until he decided to leave, thankfully. We then ended up going to bed, comfy away from all of the violence. Well, except for Grace, who's sleeping on the floor, compared to Rosh who has a nice bed, but you know what I mean. We ended up deconstructing some more runes and getting some iron and steel that we had planned on using for more shelves in this new room that we're going to use as storage and a production area for the time being. I'd like to say as well by this point we are really accumulating quite a bit of steel and iron which I hope will come to help us later on. For the time being though we are now being raided by the Purple Meyer Pack. It appears to be two raiders and one of which who has a wolfskin cap actually is a a fire mage, which is extremely worrying. They began crossing through a cave where the insectoids and wildlife had clashed, and this ended up being a blessing in disguise, as they had decided to steal what they could and leave. I had no idea what they were going to steal, but it was apparently a massive animal corpse. I know what you're thinking, and yes, I thought this was pretty crazy too, but let's be honest, in a frozen, hellish planet like this, a massive animal corpse is probably worth a lot in terms of food and leather. We gave chase for a moment 
moment after the fire mage, but he did get away. We would then end up spending a good portion of our time moving some of our resources and whatnot that we had in storage to the other storage room. We were going to use the previous one for solely food. It was around this time as well that I thought I had a big brain idea. You see Rosh, of course, missing his leg. We have another person now. We could install a peg leg. That's at least what I thought. But unfortunately, it appears this is not possible because Grace does not have near high enough medical skill to do so. Ah, sometimes you win, sometimes you don't win at all. We would end up adding on to our bedroom since it is technically a barracks at this time. We wanted it to be much more spacious for the colonists, but also for the heat from the campfire and the geyser. But I was kicking myself in the ass for using all that wood now because I don't have enough for all of the wood flooring. But of course, a great substitute for wood is bones. So we would end up doing quite a bit of hunting and do a shit ton of butchering from animals that we hunted, other animals had hunted and left, and also many of the insectoids from the cave. And of course, as you could imagine, this was a win-win situation. We have plenty of bones to build with now, but we also had a freezer full of meat. Not too long after that though, we ended up having an eclipse, which just really added to the environment and the aesthetic of this frozen wasteland. I didn't think things could get much colder, but no sun really changed my mind. And I loved it. We then ended up having a Gorlin pod sprout, and I thought about using this for some of the Dryads that create wood, but for the time being, I decided to put it in storage, and you'll see later on in the video, this was actually a really good idea. We also ended up having to deal with a mad Ibex doe, but this obviously wasn't much of a problem. We shot at it several times and eventually ended up killing it. More bones for the pile. Speaking of which, we would use our current pile of bones to end up building Grace a proper bed, and we would also end up using using the rest of them that we had so far to build her a dresser. I also decided to implement a little bit of a trick that one of our Discord members told me about. I ended up mining a bit of jade and we brought it back and built a jade fence in our room. And I know what you're thinking, that's a little bit weird, why would you do that? And I completely agree with you, however the beauty stat and whatnot of jade made it extremely beautiful to have this small piece of fence in the room, and thus we actually ended up with a pretty good barracks. And I just want to say that I'm extremely excited and so proud of how well our base is coming along. I did decide, however, we needed to start doing some research on stone cutting because of our severe lack of resources. It's going to be extremely important that we actually have something here that we can build more onto the cabin with, um, such as different types of stones. There's not a lot of wood and trees and whatnot, but there are plenty of stone chunks, of course. What little bits and bobs of remaining bones that we had, I decided to try and make some pretty flooring out of in our dining room slash kitchen, and this ended up giving us a decent dining room, so it was better than it was. I wanted to take a second and mention as well, you guys have probably already noticed as we're getting close to the end of the video that um, I'm using a more somber and lower tone and whatnot to narrate this episode. I thought it might be a fitting way to narrate this series as it's something that we're kind of doing more for winter time and maybe around the holidays. So let me know what you guys think about the way that I'm narrating this. If you'd like to see the other episodes in this series narrated like this, be sure to just let me know in the comment section down below. Um, I I really enjoy it to be honest so. Nevertheless though we ended up having a raid from the Grey River Pact. It would appear that they actually ended up sending two elves here to try and raid us. For whatever reason though one of the elves decided to venture into a nearby cave where there were a bunch of insectoids who he then started a fight with and they promptly beat him down. So now we only had one elf to deal with and she began attacking but I had claimed some of the ancient crates and stuff nearby so she started attacking those. I really pulled the wool over the old AI here. Regardless though this did give us the perfect opportunity to try and attack her from afar with our rifle and our bow. Eventually she caught up with us though and this ensued a melee battle between us and her and we eventually won. And of course, to the victor go the spoils. We took her elven dagger and four wine bottles. Her elf compadre in the cave was still alive, and I did like the way that his stats were looking, so I ended up sending Grace up there to try and capture him. We actually got him away from the insectoids, and we began trying to tend to him. Unfortunately, though, he ended up getting an infection. 
And I'm going to be completely honest with you here, I didn't want to deal with an infection, especially since Grace is leaving soon, so we decided to bring him back home, we stripped him of his belongings, and then we took him out butt naked into the cold snow and laid him down right next to a handsome sleeping cave bear, who is most likely very hungry as it is constantly killing all the animals in the area that we butcher. Rosh and Grace then ended up equipping all of his nice gear and taking some of his weapons and whatnot that he had as well, and they are truly the dynamic duo. Speaking of which, the two of them would end up expanding our dining room with all the bones that they had accrued from the ancient footman that we deconstructed earlier in a few of the clips. While they were working on the dining room though, we ended up having a slaver caravan come from a nearby faction known as Hal Bindo. And of course we ended up buying a slave so that we would have some company after Grace ended up leaving us in a few days. And this is where the Garland pod ended up coming in handy as it was the last thing I needed to sell to have enough money. The slave's name was Zippy and she ended up having a pretty good skill set in terms of construction and cooking which was basically exactly what Grace had as well. While we're on the topic of Grace as well she was getting ready to depart within the next couple of hours so before she done that I went to ensure that we took her into the storage room and made her give back all the gear, weapons, anything of ours that she had on her. She would then spend her remaining time in our dining room building some packed dirt pathing which actually does not have a negative beauty but unfortunately time comes for all of us and it is time for Grace to depart us here. She was a more than wonderful addition to the Eternal Flame team here at Mount Rosh and we will not soon forget her nor will we forget her generosity. And then there were two. Looks like it's just Rosh and Zippy from here on out at least for the time being. But I would like to thank you all ever so much for watching. I love you very much and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.